thank you everyone for your presence and uh, i'm delighted to present uh, on uh, how to write research papers as you can understand this is uh, such an important area and uh, somehow it doesn't get the importance that it deserves and uh, in today's presentation, I'll be talking about the structure of a research paper, what are the elements that we should be uh, bothered about, and also about certain writing tips and uh, how to write titles, how to write abstracts, and uh, issues regarding plagiarism and uh, citations, and of course about uh, uh, finding the right journals. So uh, let's uh, have this discussion for the next 40-45 uh, minutes. And whenever we are writing, we must be aware, or whatever we do as communicators, we must be aware of who is our target audience and who are we trying to impress. Although in communication, uh, the expression is the important part, but of course, you know, these are very important people, the journal editors who are the gatekeepers, who decide whether a certain thing uh, go, to, go to print or not, the peer reviewers, the most important gatekeepers there, of course, scholars and academicians, because they are the ones uh, uh, who decide whether to cite your work or not. And if you are lucky, then you are also trying to impress the professionals uh, who might get certain inputs from your work and also policy makers. Uh, these are the objectives we generally have before we start writing newspapers, or these should be the objectives. Uh, uh, of course, getting cited is very important because that's why we do our research work, that somebody will find it interesting or will take the research forward or will use parts of the research for their own work. And we want to provide an original contribution to our field, whatever field we are writing with uh, for. And uh, as I said uh, before, you know, we are trying to uh, influence the practitioners and the policy makers as well. So uh, there are lots and lots of advice about writing a research paper and uh, I start off with a very simple one by George M. Whitesides, and he says that start with a blank piece of paper and write down in any order all important ideas that occur to you concerning the paper. So we'll uh, talk about uh, how to do this outlining, but it's important that whenever that idea strikes us or whenever it comes to us, we must make sure that we jot it down on, on uh, a piece of paper or on your mobile uh, notepad or, or wherever. Uh, for these uh, uh, structuring uh, things, I'm going to follow this particular uh, work by uh, uh, Brench and uh, Cording, and it, it's uh, called 10 Simple Rules for Structuring Papers. So I'll talk about those 10 simple rules, and it is uh, from a paper on computational biology on PLOS, but it's uh, extremely useful for other fields as well. So I'm just uh, talking about these 10 rules that uh, these writers talk about, uh, Mensch and uh, Cording. And this is a very, very, uh, 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 this is a very popular rule that people cite whenever they're talking about uh, research papers. So first of all, focus your paper on a central contribution, and that must be communicated in the title as well. And that is important that uh, we, uh, if we forget the central contribution, then uh, the paper becomes unreadable for everybody, for the editor, for the peer reviewer, and of course for the reader. And then your uh, work is lost in the mesh. Uh, write for flesh and blood human beings who do not know your work. So uh, you must have uh, uh, the expert in mind. Of course, we have the expert in mind because we know that the editor is going to read it or the reviewer is going to read it. But it is also for people who do not know your work. So uh, uh, the aim is to also make people read your work. If they're not reading your work, then uh, your, your, your work is not important. It will just be uh, one of the many in, in the field. Uh, the third rule that these authors uh, suggest is to stick to the context content and conclusion. So the context is what we'll keep in mind and the content and the conclusion as well. In fact, the structure that I'm going to talk about, uh, the IMRD structure in, in a moment's time, we will uh, find that it, it's resonated there as well. The fourth rule, optimize your logical flow by avoiding those zigzag and using parallelism. So parallelism is like uh, the same kind of styles. If you're having uh, three research questions or whatever, then answering them one after the other. It's, uh, they they uh, 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 do not advise us to uh, go into that zigzag form or you know, going to the subplots and coming back and so on and so forth. As you can understand, there are so many things to talk about this. So I, I don't want to... Uh, get into uh, each of these rules uh, separately. And uh, as you can understand, we can have one full presentation on just these 10 rules. The fifth and a very, very important rule, and I will uh, emphasize on that as I go along, is about telling a complete story in the abstract, being very, very careful about how you write the abstract, because that is where uh, people decide whether to read it or whether to take it forward and so on and so forth. So writing a complete story in the abstract is a very important rule to uh, follow. Uh, and another uh, very important rule is about the introduction. And very often we are not even aware of uh, what the introduction should have. 
So we will talk in details about uh, what are the elements that we uh, require to put in, uh, into a research paper introduction. Uh, then uh, delivering the results as a sequence of statements supported by figures that connect logically to support the central contribution. So we'll find out that the result section is also a very, very important section and uh, it has to have the sequence of statements and I will talk in details about uh, uh, how to do that. Uh, the discussion part is again, you know, one part where, where uh, we have to uh, provide how the gap was filled. So because we, we started doing this research in the first place because we had identified certain gaps or we wanted to uh, provide inputs into certain things. So how that particular gap was filled, for example, and, and the limitations. And uh, we'll talk about limitations also, interpretation and relevance to the field. So these are important things in discussions. Often we, we, are, we are so... Uh, and gross in the first three parts that we do not give uh, discussion the uh, importance it deserves. Uh, rule nine, a very, very important rule, allocate time where it matters, the title, the abstract, the figures, and the outlining. So uh, you'll find that more, many researchers, they do not put uh, so much stress on these particular things. So that's a very important piece of advice on the title, on abstract, on figures, and on outlining. And in today's presentation, I'm going to talk about abstract titles and outlining in details. Uh, Getting feedback, uh, we'll talk about why that is important. And the same authors, they say that if that rule is violated, how do you know about it? So the first rule was about the focusing on the big idea. And uh, if that is violated, readers cannot give a one sentence summary. So that's one important thing that if, if people cannot summarize your work in one or two sentences, then uh, it's, it's, uh, it's too diffuse, then you're not uh, doing a good job. The second important thing to, uh, or, or the second thing that we uh, saw in the last uh, a slide was about writing for a flesh and blood human beings. So readers do not get the paper. If people do not understand your paper, then very few people are going to read it. And, uh, that, uh, and uh, as readers we do, or as writers, we don't want that. Uh, use context, con uh, content, and uh, conclusion. So the triple C structure, as I said. So readers ask why something matters or what it means. So if, you, if you're not providing the context and the content and the conclusion, then uh, people don't have an idea about why it matters. So uh, when we are talking the per on, uh, from the perspective of audience, the idea is to tell uh, writers that what you should consider important. Optimize the logical flow. So uh, if people stumble on a small section of the text, that's where uh, you have uh, failed on the logical flow. So this uh, fourth rule again, you know, I'm repeating and uh, how, how that is important. The fifth abstract, it has to be a compact summary of the paper. If people do not get the elevator pitch of your work after reading the elevator pitch means they want to get to read the paper. So if people do not uh, decide on reading the paper of the abstract, then your abstract is not useful. Introduction, as I said, the, the most important part of the paper and we'll have to uh, put a lot more stress on uh, 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 introduction because that's where the interest grows for the reader. The results why the conclusions are justified and if, if your readers or if, uh, if people, uh, our peers, they do not agree with our conclusion, then the result uh, section is, is not what it should be. Uh, same for uh, uh, discussion and uh, the other points. So these are the 10 uh, points as we, as we suggested uh, is, is, is important for uh, uh, any person who's uh, wanting to write a research paper. So let's now start in... Uh, uh, from the outline. So how do we uh, bring out the outline? As I said, different people have different ways of working. But whenever we are planning to write anything, whether it's a chapter, whether it's a paper or even a dissertation, we must have an outline in mind. And uh, if you're working without an outline, there are many people who are uh, who say that, you know, it's not required. But uh, if you're working systematically, it's important to understand these things about outline. So how do you write an outline? So first of all, you uh, start off with the topic. What is the idea in a sin single sentence or phrase? If that is convoluted, then you're probably lost. So first of all is the main idea. And from that main idea, you get to the main points about the main idea or about the uh, topic. So why or how is the main idea important and why or how is it right? So that is how I get the main points. So if I answer these questions, then I'll get uh, a lot of these main points. So we start off with the topic and then we go to the main points and then we have to suggest why or how the main, uh, uh, these main points are important. So after you get the main points, important to arrange them in a logical order, one after the other. Because if there is no logical flow, then uh, you'll, you'll struggle to uh, write down or you'll struggle to take it forward. And beneath each main point or beneath each of these uh, uh, major ideas, we must have 
sub points and uh, uh, many authors suggest that if you do not have at least two points for each of the main ideas so main ideas means the main point that i was talking here in the second point so that should have at least two sub points and if you do not have at least two sub points then that idea may not be relevant to the topic we are not just you know trying to fill up the spaces that it, it, it uh, should have certain reason and you must afterwards you know evaluate the outline so it is always a reflective process it's not that the first draft is uh, uh, what works so we have to evaluate the out outline look over the outline does it make sense is anything else required so that is how we go to the uh, outline so again i got it from a, a work by lead so this is how they suggest that this is how we work on the outline structure we start off with the roman numerals then we go to the capital letters then we go to the arabic numbers 1 2 3 etc then to the small letters and then finally to the small roman numeral so you have this 1 2 3 4 5 structure the microsoft word does not follow this particular structure but this is one uh, idea to make your work more systematic that when you are creating that outline structure the main idea be through roman numerals and then uh, uh, this is how you carry forward uh after the outline etc or this process uh, actually begins uh, at various positions it can be at the end of your work it can be right at the beginning of the work but i'm just putting in, uh, in uh, today's presentation i'm just putting it here because later on there are more important things to talk about so identifying the right journal is very important so what are the aims of the journal because a lot of the time our work gets rejected at the desk it is not even sent for peer review because your work does not uh, fall with the aim of the journal or so so it's very important to go to their website and find out uh, what do they aim to do and the style and the format of the journal what are the what what's the audience that they're looking forward to uh, they are they are they are uh, catering to and then the ethical guidelines and data sharing because in many journals uh, they, they have an open data policy where you'll have to put out your data if it's a survey data or whatever you'll have to put it out on their website and if anybody wants to do a similar work they can draw their conclusions from there so it depends on various journals so important to identify the right journal and to familiarize yourself with the journals in the field as well and this is a question that we ask uh, or, or we get to know very often about you know uh, uh, people asking that which journal should i publish in so it's important to look for journals that have published uh, content similar to yours and which are the journals which appear most in the list of citations so because if you are publishing in journals which are not the ones that get uh, cited then uh, probably uh, you uh, you shouldn't be looking for uh, such journals and of course there are many other factors and i don't want to get into all of that but uh, there are journals uh, which are open access some which are not uh, there is a question about the prestige of the journal as i said about about indexed whether it is indexed in scopus or on web of science or whether it is on the care list or whatever impact factor you shouldn't be much bothered about impact factors because there are lots of uh, 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 problems there so we will will uh, talk about that at a later time uh the publication time required and the likelihood of uh, uh, acceptance so i'll uh, carry on with uh, uh, this uh, presentation so uh, the uh, uh, factors as i said is about the uh, scopus index then it's also about the uh, directory of uh, open uh, access and uh, the care uh, thing as you know we we, we as uh, uh, individuals are are uh, should be uh, you know concerned about because our work if it's not uh, in one of these journals and probably it's uh, so it has you know the ugc has uh, uh, now is now having just these two groups the first is a group 1 which is uh, there in the ugc care protocol the second is the one which is indexed in uh, scopus or in web of science or in social sciences index or these kind of uh, in the indices so uh, that's how we identify the journal so that shouldn't be a very uh, 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 tough process so uh, often the uh, paper as i said will not make it to the peer review process because there are some fatal flaws in your paper so we must be very clear about uh, identifying those fatal flaws even before sending it out to a journal because if it does not uh, get into the peer review process then that learning process uh, that you can go through just by getting the response to your paper is lost so this is one one hurdle that we must cross and if you are 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 uh, Uh, aware of the journal policies and all those things then uh, the, you can avoid desk rejection so what happens in desk rejection is that maybe an assistant editor or whatever he or she decides that okay this is uh, not good enough to be sent for peer review so there is the first gate keeping is at that process that the person decides whether it is good enough to be sent for peer review peer review as you can understand it it will go to a senior colleague uh, who's an who's re regarded as an expert in the field and he or she will peer review it and there are lots of uh, 
uh, apprehensions about peer review and this is a, a funny diagram that i found out in uh, one of those uh, uh, sites and uh, this is what people have an idea about that you are the writer and as you can understand that you know the, this stereotype is, is is quite an old person and uh, he or she wants to get the paper accepted this is the goal and this is what they have to contend with or at least that is what most uh, authors authors think of peer review as these are the people who are you know waiting with all their weapons to you know kind of uh, prevent us from from getting the paper accepted or at least that is the idea or as you can understand this is one funny way of uh, looking at uh, peer review but uh, it, it's a it's a tough process as you can understand it's time consuming and a lot of times you know we we a uh, lot of lot of authors all of us you know have have uh, faced uh, lots of rejections and that's where you know a lot of uh, frustration creeps in so on and so forth but uh, peer review process is very very important in in any field and that's uh, uh, there are certain reasons and this is again you know from one of the works by hames 2008 and one of the reasons that we have peer review in in in, in such a, a systematic form is to prevent the publication of bad work so if a bad work gets published uh, published then you understand the problem and uh, that's where you know uh, it might lead to some some of the vicious circles and to also to check that the uh, uh, research has been carried out well so the methodology etc they are they've been carried out well also that the results have been presented correctly and they are not too speculative and it's for general interest to the readership and the peer review process is also to help editors decide or to make judgments on uh, as to whether the articles meet the selection criteria or not so generally uh, the peer review process is is uh, not as uh, combative as it appears from this picture but it uh, it has some very very important uh, functions in the uh, publication process so as uh, writers we must be aware of these requirements so uh, again another quote it says that if the abstract is of interest the editor next looks to the method section so method section is again a very important part so uh, we'll we'll talk about the uh, method section and uh, so on and so forth so the next few slides they are from again uh, this paper on how to write your first research paper this is by elena d uh, kalistinova and uh, every uh, uh, good uh, writing class on research papers or on articles talks of these uh, four structures some of uh, some people call it as the imrad imrad structure or uh, many of us uh, we call it as the imrd structure so uh, this is what your paper should have first of all the introduction why did you do it why did you do the research the method section how did you do it results what did you find and discussion so what why 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 should we be interested so if you can uh, conceptualize the writing process into these four parts then uh, a, a lot of the trouble is taken care of if you know why you did it and if you are if you are able to put it out in the introduction on why you did it or in the method section very clearly on how you did it but as you can understand this is just a very simplistic way of saying uh, talking about a very complex thing and i will uh, talk about all these four uh, sections in details right now so most of our uh, theoretical uh, most of our uh, you know social science papers and uh, papers in other fields also they will follow uh, follow this imrd structure there are some theoretical papers which which uh, does not follow this imrd structure so just just a caveat that this is not a, a kind of a rule that has to be there all the time there might be you know uh, you know historical review articles or there might be some review articles which talk about uh, current work and there might be some so historical paper that do not follow that imrd process so if you are writing some historical work then you do not have to Uh, follow this particular process or when you're writing these systematic review articles whether you are proposing a theory or whatever even there you, you, you know in in these theoretical works you do not have to talk about the imrd process so that's not uh, something that is 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 est in gold so it is something that can be uh, avoided in, in certain cases but we should know what we're doing and that's that's uh, uh, one you know if you are if you are aware of, of of the traditions in the field then we'll be probably uh, clear about that so uh, just to talk about this and i, I will go that uh, to this in, in in greater detail so as you can see the introduction for uh, takes a long part of it so just the width of these uh, 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 quadrilaterals it gives me an idea about uh, uh, how much importance is given to all these things so the introduction is uh, quite important as you can see and then the methods and the results section and you can see they are related to each other they are uh, 
uh, slightly thinner. And then the discussion part is again very uh, thicker. So uh, uh, in the introduction part, we go from a general discussion to a specific discussion. So it could be from uh, general, general theoretical work and going on to the specific. And in the discussion part, we will actually do the opposite. We'll, uh, we have our specific results. And from those specific results, we are trying to generalize it into our field or we are uh, having those uh, components of discussions. And I'll talk in, in uh, details about uh, these uh, uh, four uh, sections or these four structures of IMRD. So again, you know, just to go back to uh, the the, the uh, outlining part, and you know, to talk about uh, how do we look at the uh, introduction now. So I'm looking at all these four parts separately now, starting with introduction. So the first line is about what is the topic of my paper, and we have seen uh, earlier, and I'm just trying to uh, uh, emphasize on those things again. Uh, why is the topic important? How do I formulate my hypothesis? What are my results, and what is my major finding? So why is your research important? What is known about the topic? What are your hypotheses and what are your objectives? They all go into the introduction. So very often we think that introduction is just like, you know, something that we just have a general talk about and then we will talk about or These are just two or three pages. We just fill in just like that. No, we have to put in all the important things right at the introduction. Why is your research important? What is known about the topic? What are your research questions or whatever? What are the objectives that you want to do, uh, achieve uh, through the paper? So uh, this is again a very useful piece of advice. Interest your reader in the introduction section by signaling all its elements and stating the novelty of the work. Why is your work new? Why should I be reading it? Why should I be interested in uh, going forward with your work? So uh, the fact that uh, this work hasn't been done before is not reason enough. And very often when you ask people that why you are doing this research, they say that, oh, there is nothing that has been done there. Maybe you don't know that uh, there is a lot of things. So that is not enough. The fact that there is not enough data, even that is not justification enough. You have to know what, why is it important? And that's important. So what, the, what is the value of the research? Just because nobody's done it before is not, not a, a reason enough. And uh, don't just list what people have done in the past, but discuss why it is interesting. So we are we are not going to just you know chronologically li list about you know Mr X did that and Mr Y did that and Mr Z no we have to uh, talk about the issues and why they are uh, uh, interesting and uh, it's better not to exaggerate or to speculate that this is the first uh, research of its kind uh, so on and so forth and we'll talk about academic modesty also as we uh, go along so uh, this again is from from these established works so first of all uh, in introduction they talk about these three moves. So the first one is to establish a research territory. Uh, so when you when you establish the research territory, you have to show that the general research area that you talk about is important, is interesting, and there are certain problems which need to be addressed. And you have to introduce and review items of some previous research in the area as well. So that's how you establish a research territory in the introduction. And then the second thing that you do in the introduction is to find a niche to indicate a gap in the previous research that, okay, they have done this research, but it was not in, in, in respect to social media or it was not in respect to a post COVID world or things like that. So finding a niche means, you know, looking at that gap or extending previous knowledge in a new way. So if you do not find a niche, then your work is, is it can't be, you know, just repetitive of what, what has been done earlier. So that niche can be of many, many types. It can be, you know, this is from a Western perspective. I'm doing it in the Indian perspective. Okay, it has been done in, in, in on a North Indian perspective. I'm doing it in this or whatever. So that finding that a niche is very important after you have established the research territory in the introduction. And then you occupy the niche. And that's where you, you outline the purposes of, of your research. Then you list your research questions. Then you announce the principal findings. It will be principal, P-A-L. And then you state the value of the present research and the structure of the research paper that this is what we do. And this has to be in the introduction. As you understand, introduction is a, is a very thick part of it. So it has to be there in the introduction part. I mean, uh, it, it, it can't be just a, a, a few paragraphs about, you know, why the research is important, so on and so forth. So the introduction should have all these things. And if your paper is not structured like that, then uh, uh, peer reviewers and editors who are used to uh, reading quality papers of this kind, they, they, they will find uh, some kind of a fatal flaw if your structure does not uh, have that. So this is just, uh, I've, I've copied it from uh, one, one uh, introduction. Uh, just to read it out, uh, just to say that, uh, in this paper, I describe a field test of Cross's multi-method approach to the construction of a culturally grounded measure for older people in Thailand as a step-by-step -step elucidation, et cetera. So it has to give people an idea about uh, 
uh, uh, what uh, uh, you know the paper is about. And as a reviewer, uh, this is again by uh, M. Uh, uh, Snogoronsky in, in, in 2008, if, if I can't reconstruct the author's means of collecting, reducing and analyzing data, then I have little faith that later on it will be responsible and consistent. So important to have, as he said, that important to uh, find the opening theoretical gambit to be compelling. So you have to make it compelling at the introduction phase itself. So uh, just to emphasize the importance of uh, uh, introduction. And from there, I go to the method section. So if you, if you see this uh, uh, diagram, so we will come back to this diagram again. Uh, 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 from, from introduction, we have gone to the methods section. So very quickly, uh, 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 the methods must provide an, an overview of, of, of the work you've done and about the research aims that this is what I wanted to get or these, are my, these were the research questions, etc. And who were the subjects? If you did an experiment, you have to talk about, you know, whether you uh, uh, took people from, a, from, from an undergraduate course or this or that or whatever, or, or whatever materials, you know, if you use documents or if you used uh, other kind of textual matter or whatever, it has to be there. What was the location? Did you actually, you know, do it uh, on, on, on a software or you uh, went there and you spoke to people? It was on field, it was online, so on and so forth. It has to be there. The procedure, how you exactly did that. And then the limitation and the data analysis. So as you can understand, it, uh, it is a very, very structured way of writing the methods. Again, you start off with the overview, you provide the research aims, you provide uh, whoever your subjects or whatever documents, etc. you use, you provide the location, the procedure you did it, the way you did it. And then you also talk about the limitation of that. So in fact, if your sampling was, uh, you know, uh, for example, uh, just just uh, wasn't random, we have to provide it uh, there. And then we talk about uh, the data analysis process there as well in the method section. So a very, very important part of the uh, 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 research paper structure. So we provide useful background knowledge, uh, you know, in, in the method section because it has to be uh, elaborated. So we, we describe the procedural steps. Uh, we include uh, uh, justification that to determine this, we did that or, 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 or you know, uh, these kind of things because uh, that elaboration is important. That justification has to be provided there in the paper using cognitive or volitional word we believed or we wanted to or we, we, uh, we understood and so on and so forth. So what, what are the assumptions that you uh, uh, had in the uh, method section. So uh, again, as I said, this uh, uh, when you follow this structure, it, it becomes a lot easier for anybody who is uh, uh, reading it. So this is again, you know, one way of suggesting that you provide the uh, uh, background information, then you summarize the, uh, uh, so I'm talking about the results, then we talk about the com comments and we talk about the limitations and also about the recommendations. So let me just talk about this in, 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 in a different way. So uh, after the methods part, we started off with uh, in, uh, the introduction part and we told you that it's so important. We did the uh, 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 methods part and now we are in the results part. And I'm just showing you some examples of, of uh, you know, how to, these are just one sentences. And uh, as, as I said in the earlier slide, you have to uh, uh, provide a lot more justification for your results as you uh, go on. So analysis showed that 70.5% of students had access to both desktop and a desktop, uh, laptop computer, while only 0.6% of students had access to neither. As you can understand that as a, a social, uh, social science uh, scholars, we have to follow uh, a particular style, which is known as the APA style. And uh, uh, I have an, another lecture on my YouTube channel on, on how to use APA style. So you can uh, have a look at that. But uh, uh, these are just ways of, you know, talking about subordinators, about, about, about talking, you know, using phrase linkers. In contrast to the fo fo false positives, the false negative rate improves when the distance threshold. So this is just about some research we are talking about conjunctions. Conjunctions, for example, the results of some observers were poor, but of others were satisfactory. And then you write the uh, table. More likely than less likely than uh, women were are, are more likely uh, to have given the most pro-neighborhood answer or things like that. The results shown are very much like that. During the study period, uh, uh, both cities and uh, suburbs alike. So when you're using uh, these particular terms, your results are very clear to whoever is reading and uh, you know whether you're trying to relate it or whether you're trying to uh, put it in absolute terms. So just a very quick example of uh, the terms or the phrases that we can use in uh, 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 results. And we can also, you know, uh, include uh, steps of procedures if, if uh, you know, which are required to uh, maybe that, uh, you know, following the method section, we need to put that in the result section again and any other detail is required uh, there or not. 
and uh, uh, I've, I've spoken about the word, so I, I won't. I, I will skip that particular uh, word from there. And then we come to the most important uh, part, or, or one of the most important parts after the introduction part, and that is the discussion part. So discussion part has to be uh, these things. It has to be more theoretical. Because as we saw uh, in the earlier diagram, it has to go from a specific to general. So it has to be, be more theoretical. It has to talk in more abstract terms. It has to talk in more general terms. It has to be more in integrated with the entire field and with the entire world and also with the implications and applications of the study. So uh, that is where you are describing your research or you are telling you, uh, you know, why the research is important in a general kind of a way. And very often these questions are asked of, of you know, research, especially from, from uh, Indian countries, you know, that how is it relevant to a Western perspective or things like that. So you have to uh, connect it to the real world or integrate it to the field at, at large. And you also have to discuss the limitations of the study. And I will talk about limitations in a, a, a more general way in a moment's time. So the discussion is, is an important, a very important part. So just like uh, uh, I did with the introduction, I want to you know talk about the three moves there. So first of all, the study's major findings. So what are the major findings of your study and the meaning and importance of those findings? And whether there, there is an alternative explanation, because you know that's my explanation. So whether there is an alternative explanation and why that explanation is true or not true. So you are uh, you know, uh, uh, trying to cover all bases, if, if I can use that metaphor. And then the research context, where you compare and contrast your findings with other published results, whether it is similar, whether it is different, uh, so on and so forth. So, so that's very important. And again, you know, uh, explaining any discrepancies or any uh, unexpected findings because that is what is expected and you know generally when we're doing research we want to find any unexpected finding and you know so that so that you know uh, people uh, make notice of this but again you have to be able to justify and explain those unexpected findings and if you cannot do that then uh, uh, there will be question marks on 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 your findings so uh, stating the limitations, as I again said, it has to be there in the discussion also. And then you close the paper by summarizing the answers to the research questions you had initially. And then indicating the importance of the work by, by, by applications or how it can be improved, you know, how it can be applied into the professional field or in, in the real world and whether there are any recommendations or whether there are any impl implications of the research process. So uh, again, an example of, uh, you know, how discussion is written. But uh, we will skip this, uh, uh, you know, reading that. So this is just there on the screen. If you want to read, you can just, you know, have it on the recording. Uh, limitations, again, very important. And we have to, you know, uh, uh, be aware of the limitations ourselves before those questions are raised by others. So it should be noted that this study has been primarily concerned with. So we, we did not do it for the, everybody. This is with that. The analysis has concentrated on the findings restricted to this study has addressed only the question of the limitations of the study are clear colon and then you say that we would like to point out that we have not done it for the entire population or for a random population or things like that so it's, it should be written clearly however the findings do not imply the results of this study cannot be taken as an evidence for i'm just telling you these are the uh, terminologies we use for for uh, limitations that's important Unfortunately, we are unable to determine from this data whether this can be extrapolated to the entire population. The lack of randomness means that we cannot be certain about the implications, so on and so forth. So important that we are aware of our own limitations because, as I said, you are, you are not uh, being, being uh, modest uh, uh, academically. Uh, of course, you, know, you should be very confident about your work, but uh, uh, you must also understand that uh, about the limitations, about... Uh, uh, where you know it, it could have uh, uh, been done in a different way so there we say notwithstanding its limitation this study does suggest this or despite its preliminary ca character this do that however exploratory this study may offer some insight into these kind of things so a very very good way of you know uh, signing off or, or, or ending when you do that so just to repeat that once again uh, uh, the same thing that i did so the abstract and this is one popular figure that you know i share with uh, all students and scholars and you may have seen this before as well. So the abstract, it should have uh, uh, all the things there itself. In introduction, all the three things I spoke about of establishing a territory, uh, uh, establishing a niche and occupying that niche, it should be there in the introduction followed by a uh, literature review. So that can be regarded as part of the introduction or you can regard it as, if, you, if I'm talking about the IMRD structure, you can take it uh, just between introduction and the methodology. 
the process of data collection, etc. And then in the discussion, we have uh, all those three points again about introduction, about evaluation, about the conclusion, and finally acknowledgments and references. That's uh, a, a normal thing. So this is a, a repetition of what I did uh, so far. Uh, now I'll talk about three or four things uh, uh, very quickly and basically about the title, about the abstract, about revision and about uh, the use of English and uh, so on and so forth. So uh, as you can understand, the, the structure of the paper and so on, they are so very important, but the title should be uh, uh, very often people write title at the end of the work. So, so uh, uh, it's important how you write down the title. So it's indicate, of course, the topic of the study, the scope of the study, and should be self-explanatory to whoever it is reading. So if it is a focused work, it should be there in the title. It shouldn't be uh, 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 too uh, ambitious, uh, if I can use that word. So very uh, different of, uh, you know, we use maybe finite words towards an understanding of, of uh, social media use or those kind of things. We use colons, and I will talk about, you know, how colons are very well used in when we write down those uh, 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 titles. Uh, at times we use uh, questions also. So you, if you search and, uh, you know, there are lots of, uh, there's a lot of work on that. So uh, we can uh, uh, have, have a Google search and find out about, you know, how people, you know, just use question marks in the title. So that is a good way of inviting readers and also using of uh, qualifications. So instead of saying towards, uh, uh, towards uh, a theory of social media use, we can say towards a possible theory of social media use. So there you are trying to, you know, as I said, covering all bases. So possible is a qualification we use. So uh, very often in social science, we use the colon to, uh, um, you know, put the two different aspects of the title, uh, you know, there. So it could be the first part of it is about the problem. The second is the solution. So before the colon, you're writing about the problem in the, uh, and then you're writing the solution. Or before the colon, you're writing something general and then this is about specific. So uh, an overview of agenda setting model and then uh, um, a, a review of, uh, or, or uh, you know, a survey of uh, Kolkata students or things like that. So this is just very uh, crude. So but it could be about topic and it could be about method. So uh, uh, it could be, uh, you know, news framing, colon, a structural equation uh, modeling method. So you're uh, writing the topic first and then the method after the colon. And maybe starting off with something major and then uh, the minor thing after the colon. So colon is very uh, one good way of writing down uh, uh, titles. As I said, abstracts are so important that they're standalone mini texts. And they have lots of functions. They, they are used for screening. They are, they, they are important for readers and they are important for professional abstract writers or people who are trying to uh, compile uh, those abstracts. So uh, abstracts can, uh, you know, these are some of the beginnings I said that this is how you can begin in access uh, abstract. So you can start off with a real world phenomenon. So something like communication scholars have long been interested in the relationship between media use and credibility. So there you start off with a, a real world phenomenon, or it could be uh, starting off with an purpose or an objective. The aim of the st uh, study is to uh, examine the effects of online behavior. Or you can start with the present researcher action. We analyze social media use before and after the uh, pandemic. So these are uh, very, very uh, simple uh, ways of, of, of uh, you know, uh, joining, uh, 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 of starting abstracts. Or you can start off with a problem or, or uncertainty. So just the first word of the abstract is, as I said, so important. So this is from Swayze and Feek's book from 2009. And they have a very good book on writing uh, for academic work. So a research abstract can be result driven or it can be a summary abstract. So it could be indicative about, you know, what was done or it could be informative that you talk about your main findings. Often they uh, look for editors, they look for keywords also, four or five keywords, and they, uh, they are looking for those words to put it out to peer reviewers. So if you write those keywords, it should be uh, uh, specific enough, but not too specific that, you know, uh, uh, the it does not, uh, you know, fall into certain categories. So, for example, if you could be talking about quantitative, you could be talking about framing research, you could be talking about uh, uh, Kolkata or whatever. So, four or five important, uh, very most important keywords from your research, which you identify yourself. So, uh, at certain times in, in our field, we do not have those structured abstracts, but in uh, many uh, places, we have these structured abstracts also, where you have to write on the background, the aim, the method, the results, the conclusion, and all that. Uh, we have to be extremely, extremely careful about uh, use of others published and unpublished ideas because if you do not attribute or if you do not have permission and if you do not uh, uh, use it properly, then you will land in big trouble. 
so uh, uh, these similarity index indices they can be very very uh, uh, confusing at times so unless it's from 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 uh, and i can use uh, the name here if, if it's from you know uh, established agencies like turn it in a lot of those free plagiarism detecting software they will uh, you know kind of uh, be be uh, giving you wrong results so it, the same thing that you know uh, very recently i i, I did some uh, similarity test and i found 39% similarity on turn it in and you know i did it on some other software it was just 10% similarity so be very careful about that correct citation and referencing is very very important and because many people they think that no but i have taken the uh, 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 text and I have cited it. That's not enough because if you if you're taking uh, one third of the text from other people and you're not writing in your own words, then that research paper is not yours. So if you're using text from other places, you make sure that you just paraphrase it, and that's important. Uh, uh, paraphrasing means using your own words to to uh, 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 make the message. And you know, uh, uh, and when you're using that, you make sure that you do not paraphrase the specialized uh, you know vocabulary or the specialized, if I can use the term jargon so uh, paraphrasing is is a very important thing uh, citation is uh, again uh, so very important and it's important because you know you want to acknowledge some uh, somebody else's work you want to show respect for previous scholars and you give your arguments greater authority because you're suggesting i have read these latest documents so if your citations are very old then that's uh, 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 you know, a question mark that you know uh, you ha you haven't uh, uh, done uh, or you haven't read the recent literature on that. So uh, the, the the citations are very very uh, important, and as I said, uh, APA uh, has a very important uh, structures on that, and I don't want to get into details on that. I've spoken on APA uh, elsewhere. So uh, writing, you know, if it's too much. That's a problem. Or if you're writing too formally, you're using too much of uh, sophisticated language, then it needs revision. So I will talk about uh, uh, revising the writing in the last part of today's presentation. And uh, uh, it's important that when you create the first draft, do not succumb to the temptation of editing. That you know, you write the first few lines and you think that let's uh, edit now. So that is not uh, uh, an advisable thing. All writers, they will ask you to just put out, put your ideas into the paper and leave revision and editing for later. If you halt to improve your sentence structure uh, every point of time, then uh, you are you are uh, you know breaking down your your flow of ideas and all. So whatever it is, let let that ideas uh, flow and have the uh, revision for later on. Because when you are reading it later, you will be reading it from a distance, and that's what is important. Uh, because if you are uh, revising it while you're writing, then that distance is not there. So when you're revising later on, you are doing it at two levels. You're revising at a macro structure, seeing whether all that you know, the introduction, the the, the uh, literature review, the the uh, methods and the discussions and the conclusion, all there they are uh, right or not, and then then into the micro structure, looking at you know um, uh, things including language, and whether there is any gap or not. And this is one very uh, uh, simple thing. This is available on. Uh, Internet seven rules for using plain English, and these are some very important rules. And this is uh, uh, from this uh, author aid uh, uh, site, and you can you know go to that site as well to get uh, an idea about all these. And we've been talking about these things very often using uh, active sentences, using sentences short, using you and we because you know if you're not using you and we and you are saying there was a decision, then we are not saying that who did what. So avoiding jargon and you know uh, avoid turning verbs into nouns. So English writing is all about fantastic image inducing verbs. So use these uh, uh, verbs instead of making it into nouns. There are reasons for that, but uh, uh, at today's session, I don't have time to get into all that. So, And wherever possible, you can get into this uh, point wise form as well. Uh, again, uh, you know, a lot of those uh, uh, advice about uh, rewriting passive sentences in active form and uh, Searching for verbs uh, where where you're writing is, are, was, where, and rewrite them with a more powerful verb, because English is all about verbs and powerful verbs. So let's have uh, as much verb as possible. And there are other a uh, lot of other uh, uh, good advice, including that you know uh, whenever there is a which, w h i c h, it can always be written as that. And whether whenever there is an e f f e c t effect, it is it is generally a noun. And when it is an a f f e c t effect, it's a verb. So very very different ways of uh, doing it. So uh, as I said, uh, uh, getting into that is is, is a long uh, uh, process. And another very important uh, side that you can uh, look for is that uh, academic phrase bank. And they have this phrase bank for all these things. You know whether it's for classifying, whether it's for defining terms or describing terms or describing 
quantity. So that's a very useful resource for anybody uh, who's uh, using uh, English not as their first language. So they, they provide these kind of things. I've taken screenshots from that particular website. This definition allows for highlights, helps distinguish, takes into account, poses a problem. This following this definition is intended to model on too simplistic, useful, problematic, in need for revision. So we can, you know, uh, have all these different ways of writing uh, those kind of things, or, or you know, how to write those uh, introductive processes, which can be or, or introductory phrases, which can be used as a three-part definition. So the first part, and then the uh, uh, you know, like research may be defined as a systematic process, which consists of that. A university is an institution or whatever. So it, they can be, you know, if you use these three-part definitions or if you get into habit of that, uh, then it's, it's good for uh, writing. So a lot of uh, uh, good advice on these things. So uh, just to sum up, uh, uh, we must have uh, uh, an idea about, uh, you know, the research questions in the introduction and uh, what, why, and how. So that's there in the introduction. And the, as I said, literature review is... Uh, uh, almost a part of the introduction in, in many cases, or we can have it as a sec uh, separate structure also. Uh, then the methodology and uh, very important to describe your research design, your procedures, the kind of data you had, the collection procedures you did, the uh, how you selected people and you know whether who are the human uh, subjects and whether uh, you know ethics and this cost and funding is not required, it's generally at the end. And then you, uh, the limitations, as I said, is, is uh, such an important part of the research process as well. So uh, this is from, again, uh, 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 an article called Counterintuitive Insights from an Academic Writing Coach. So productivity is personal. So everybody has have their own ways of looking at it. So uh, maybe uh, your colleagues and supervisors may be wrong. So you, you have to have your own sweet spot of uh, writing. So a lot of writing time does not always lead to a lot of writing. So it's, it's a lot about, you know, reading as much. And doing more research is not always conducive to the success. So it's not all, always, you know, about uh, doing it, but uh, putting it onto paper is, 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 is very important. So you, you go on researching about those sentences again and again and again, but that is not always the right thing. So too much of perfection there can be avoided. So accept that your writing practice will change over time, and that has to be accepted. This is something that we do not realize. And done is always better than perfect. So, so, so uh, it's important to you know uh, uh, just keep on not you know ruminating about what is there, but uh, 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 you know how how it should be done, and dedicate less time to writing and more time to reflection. Because if you're not thinking about uh, those things, uh, uh, then you know uh, you will not be able to do justice to 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 to, to the process. So uh, that ends the presentation.